fuck are those things? A decade or so after it started moving up the development chain, Prey finally arrives on Earth to invade the overcrowded sci-fi first-person shooter genre. It's a bizarre, eye-opening collection of visual tricks and gameplay oddities that breaks new ground and blatantly copies other games at the same time. You're dropped in the anti-gravity boots of Tommy, a Cherokee Indian out for a drink or two at your girlfriend's bar. Moments after you leave the john, you and your sweetheart are sucked into a spaceship and forced to battle your way out of it. It's refreshing to see a Native American in a video game leading role, but his race or background rarely comes across in the story, with the exception of visually inspiring some of the environments and inducing random spiritual meetings with your grandfather. Unlike Half-Life 2, with an intentionally speechless main character, Tommy talks a lot. This may or may not be in tune with what you're feeling at any given moment, making his expressions equally effective and annoying. Doesn't anyone ever clean this place? The developers were able to bring their dimension-defying ideas to life thanks to the Doom 3 engine, and it shows in both good and bad ways. On the upside, the graphics are excellent. The lighting is continuously impressive, and the gooey alien textures never stop moving. On the downside, Prey looks a lot like its two cousins, Doom 3 and Quake 4. The computer panels and closed corridors are very Doom-esque, and the organic material fused with futuristic technology was Quake's bread and butter. Prey does explore uncharted territory through portals that either transport you to an entirely different location or an alternate version of the room you were just in. These are entertaining, but make the game surprisingly linear. When you reach a dead end, there's usually a portal there to take you where you need to go. The other refreshing element of the disorienting design is when it throws gravity out the window. You can do this by either walking along a brightly lit track or shooting a panel that makes one of the walls suddenly become the floor. These sequences can give you a sense of vertigo several times over, but they're never too complicated to get stuck in for long. But despite the roller coaster area design, there are surprisingly few enemies and weapons. Instead of giving you multiple options in your arsenal, each gun has multiple ammo types. One gun can only be charged up at stations that give it various elemental effects, for example. This means each weapon you pick up will be full of surprises, but you can't switch back and forth between them. Despite the fact that your surroundings were undoubtedly created by beings from another world or gross yet imaginative developers, the sound effects are fairly commonplace. The atmospheric audio is creepy and unusual, but the weapons and explosions lack the punch they look like they should have. And Prey must be asking a heck of a lot out of the Xbox 360, because the stale loading screens can hold for a good minute. Along with portals and wall walking, you can also spirit walk. Although your character isn't very spiritual of mind, you're granted the power to leave your body and travel through another dimension like the body snatching in Geist, or the light and dark world in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, although it never becomes as fully developed as it was in those two games. But the game does give you a break by making death not really the end. Whenever your health hits zero, you travel to a dreamlike spirit world and are forced to play in a county fair style bow and arrow minigame. The more tormented soul birds you knock down, the more health you'll have when you go back. This means you'll have to worry less about the last time you saved or where the next med pack is, but it adds a forgiving respawning mechanic on top of forgiving level and puzzle design, making Prey a relatively easy game to run through in about 7 to 10 hours. Prey is something of a paradox, because it's got a ton of original ideas wrapped up in a package we've seen a dozen times before. It's worth experiencing if you played the demo and are curious to see more, but it doesn't live up to the monumental hype it's been building all these years. That was fucked up. <laughs>